Well, let's let's start with this. You want to open up the show? Yeah, I'm I'm opening it. Yeah. We're gonna open it with uh, what we can only assume is friend of the show and activist who uh, <laughs> confronted a Mr. Alec Baldwin yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. earlier today here in New York City. I would assume. Here we go. Alec, can you please save me, Palestine, one time? Why did you kill that lady? <laughs> She's, she talks like I'll leave you alone. I'll leave you alone. she talks like female Tracy Morgan, by the way. Yeah. It's like an episode of 30 Rock where Tracy Morgan's wearing a bow. It's so funny because it's such a separate issue, like Palestine and Alec Baldwin killing that lady. Yeah. But she managed to protest them but like <laughs> both simultaneously. To... Also, you know he's hearing that in his head all the time, but it's never in that <laughs> Why accent. did you kill that lady? <laughs> Why did yeah. you kill that lady? Why did you kill that lady? Alec. But now it's, <laughs> Why did you kill that lady? <laughs> Let's start Alec, it off. Kill... One time. Why did you kill that lady? You kill that lady and got no jail time? No jail time, Alec? No jail time, Alec. You're putting innocent people in jail, Alec Baldwin. I'm so sorry. Free Palestine, Alec, just one time, and I'll leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you alone. Free Palestine, yeah. one time. One yeah. time. One time. Now pause it. It's such a, a, a sibling thing to do. But wait a minute. Say all it this, and I'll leave you No, but like <laughs> all this piece of shit has to say is go like, I'm horrified by the amount of death that's happening in Gaza and all the innocent people that are getting killed. Yeah. That's all he has to fucking of say. Course, but he's such a of piece course. of shit. He's such a, a sure. self centered piece of he shit. Sucks. Yes. That he can't even do that. He, he can't, can't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to murder her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we'll if we'll continue the clip. It's about to end. You know he, you know he's a criminal. You know he's a fucking criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Is she talking to other people in the store? <laughs> I think so. Dude, and he's trying to kick her out know of the store. You know what's so funny? That happened at Maman Bakery, which is like the most hoity toity, like 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 overpriced. Like you walk in and there's like leaves everywhere. It's decorated very, oh, you know, right. it's very fancy. It's like, you know, salads are like twenty bucks. Mm. And uh uh for the list like she's probably never she's probably only ever been in that store to harass Alec Baldwin, <laughs> which is like amazing. Oh yeah, she followed him in there. Yeah. 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 What if he just shoots her? <laughs> <laughs> with like a, he's got a gun. <laughs> with like a, with like a, with like a Smith and Wesson, <laughs> like an old timey. <laughs> For some reason, he's carrying it because that much of a piece of shit. Oh. Did I? Wait a minute, it appears I've killed a one. <laughs> Did I tell you guys Alec Baldwin used to follow me on Twitter? No mm. shit. Really? This is pre-murder. Yeah. But oh, this was when he was getting drunk, calling his daughter a pig, <laughs> 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 eating disco fries on the floor, <laughs> whatever he was doing. That's David Hasselhoff. Nah, uh oh, was Alec he Baldwin. Fries? Oh, okay. Wait, was that David Hasselhoff? I thought it was Alec Baldwin when he looked like David Hasselhoff. Oh, okay. Is it David Hasselhoff? Well, David Hasselhoff was eating the cheeseburgers on the ground. Oh, yeah, but Alec yeah. Baldwin did call his daughter a pig. Oh, okay, but he, he, different guy. You're right. The cheeseburger was. You're a okay. filthy little pig. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Wild. Yeah. But uh, Alec Baldwin's actually a big uh, JFK or CIA assassinated JFK guy. Yeah, like he's kind of a standard Democrat, but they always he's... join way too late, though. Yeah, like get on the modern ones, which is that no, no Israelis were killed on October seventh, <laughs> or nine eleven, or nine eleven. Yeah, I forget if he's a nine eleven guy, but um, he found me through Twitter because I would post, you know, JFK assassination stuff, mm -hmm. and so he followed me for a while, and then he uh, he blocked me because I had some tweet which. Uh, uh, about the documentary filmmaker Alex Gibney, mm -hmm. who, um, if uh, uh, the listeners don't know, Alex Gibney made that documentary Park Avenue. It was very good about income inequality. Oh, that's a good, yeah. He made a good documentary, No Stone, uh, no Stone Unturned, about like a paramilitary murder in Northern Ireland. And uh, he made a few other good, oh, Client Nine about Elliot Spitzer. Uh -huh. But he made this documentary called Citizen K, which is about uh, uh, some Russian oligarch billionaire who had to flee the country when Putin came to power. And he was like, uh, he became, you know, an anti-Putin activist. And the documentary is about him, you know, protesting Putin and fighting for democracy. But it's like, this guy's a billionaire who just stole all of his money from Russian people and, you know, put 
tens of thousands of people out of work and, you know, uh, three million Russians died in the 90s. And these are because people like this guy would break up the companies and just steal all the money out and then stuff it overseas. And yeah, he had to flee the country when Putin came to power. But I, you know, it's just funny to make this documentary about this guy is such a hero and a brave democracy activist. So I tweeted out like, damn, they must have Alex, G uh, something, I, I forget exactly what, but it was something like, damn, they must have Alex Gibney on tape fucking a kid or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, I tweeted that out and Alex, <laughs> Alec Baldwin replied to me and he goes, how dare you say that about him? <laughs> he just blocks me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> like, damn. I just forgot Alec Baldwin <laughs> followed me. Sean's kind of like the Forrest Gump of uh, famous block. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, and I assume Alec Baldwin knows the guy, so it's just like calling his friend a pedophile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like six oh, well. degrees of blocking Sean on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's a lot of stuff you can do. All right, this is the Patreon, so there's like, sometimes you have to choose between like what's funny and what's like good for your career, you sure. know? Because it's like, maybe there's some there's some road. Like if you were, if you were Sam Morell, sure. you would never tweet something like that because you go, there might be some opportunity in the future where I might get to work with Alec Baldwin. Yeah. But you and people like me and you were like, what's the funniest thing right now? And it's to call his friend a pedophile. <laughs> and I was thinking like, um, John Mulaney's ex-wife like posted a, you know when the thing when they're like, ask me a question? Yeah. And usually when, when they do that, they usually see what you send because they're trying to like engage. Mm -hmm. So And so John Mulaney's wife, his ex-wife posted like, um, hey, I'm doing a book tour. Like, let me know what city you want me to come to. And I, and I really wanted to write like, I'm so sorry that your degenerate husband can't <laughs> keep his dick in his pants because you deserve better. <laughs> and I feel like that would have like made her laugh, you know? She's yeah. been through a lot. But then it's like, what if that somehow got back to... John anyway, I'm, all I'm saying is these are the... I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to message her that right now. <laughs> you don't have But to. these are the choices that you make as Nine, a... 9-11. Uh, yeah. It's 9-11, yeah. It's 9-11 on... On Monday night. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we got more advice. We more got questions. more advice for you guys. All right, from the Patreon. What is your advice for living frugally in today's fucked up economy? I'll let you guys start with this one. My uncle's license plate is I frugal. Hmm. Spelt, you know, I don't know. It's a novelty plate. Uh, no, it's like just written like shit, like I frugal. Oh, it's okay. Like F R, you know. I mean, I guess technically novelty because there's no numbers in so it. So he paid an so extra he, he twenty-seven paid dollars. So that's a novelty yeah. when you pay extra, yeah. right? So yeah, novelty. Yeah, he, that's your great point. Yeah, he, my aunt paid for it for sure. Okay, to disrespect him, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> damn, what's your advice for living frugally? Um, bring your laptop and an external hard drive to your friend's house and get on their Wi-Fi and then just torrent like three gigabytes worth of all the shows and music and movies you want to watch. Mm. Cancel all your streaming and <laughs> act like, act confused if a DMCA notice gets sent to them later. Yeah, look at the subscriptions that you're doing. I've been donating like 20 bucks a month to save the children for the past six years. Yeah, and I need to cancel it. Yeah, it's, it's like, like called someone scam. flipping out, just trying to get five years of it. Back. <laughs> trying to get a refund. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, th but canceling a lot of streaming is good. I, my kid likes watching uh, that movie Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. Yeah, that's like one of his go-to movies. I've seen the beginning of it like maybe twenty times because mm. he only watched like the first twenty minutes. But it now there's a banner across it that says "Leaving Soon." It's like leaving Netflix soon. I'm like leaving. I pay twenty bucks a month to watch this fucking movie. So where is it going? Yeah, do I have to buy it? Where where is where where can I see it now? That's the new explaining your kid that people die. Yeah, explaining to yeah. your kid that things leave streaming the services. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they disappear forever sometimes. Exactly, thanks to streaming services. Mm. Damn. It's so like why why is it leaving? So you learn loss. Yeah, because get, we don't get affected when people die anymore. You know what you got to do? We care when friends gets removed for a month and we don't know where it's gonna go. Cancel Netflix. Cancel HBO cancel Amazon Prime and just get Peacock. Peacock is $6 a month and you can there's enough stuff on there to watch. Mm. I've um, heard uh, Tubi, like the free one, has a bunch of good movies and stuff on there too now. Okay. Tubi and Pluto TV and You could also um, just like you know look at the picture of the movie and kind of fit you guess what it is. It's yeah. usually like kind of fine. Just enough. entertain yourself in your yeah, imagination. Just like <laughs> Google image the movie and then you like kind of come up with some shit, you know? 
One of the best memes I ever sure. saw, it was like, you know, the uh, they feed us poison, so we buy their cures while they suppress our medicine. <laughs> it was they feed us poison, the Netflix logo, so we buy their cures, the Criterion Channel logo, <laughs> while they suppress our medicine. It's, and it was to be free movies and TV. <laughs> 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 That's real. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I speaking guess, of oh, meal, meal prepping. I'm not like I'm always lazy about this, but if you want to save money, meal prep. For Let the me week. tell you something: three pounds of ground beef or ground chicken or ground turkey. You can make a nice chili. Get a chili recipe that you like, whether it's turkey, beef, even vegetarian chili, sweet potato chili. Chicken is also make cheap, that. healthy. Um, I don't think I don't know if it's that healthy. No, chicken in America kind of sucks. God damn it! Healthy. Okay, there's like antibiotics in most. You chicken buy your own in America. chicken. What's that? You raise your, if you raise your own chickens. You could raise chickens on your roof like <laughs> Mike Tyson. Yeah. You really want to live frugally? Raise chickens. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. You, so. could, you could bite their heads off <laughs> yeah. when they're ready to. Yeah. <laughs> um, I saw another meme that was like uh, girls with their mothers, and the girl's like, Mommy, I'm Cinderella. And the mom's like, Yes, of course, sweetie. And then it's boys with their dads, and it's like, Daddy, I'm the Green Ranger, and the dad's like, No, I'm the Green Ranger. How about you, how about you be the Red Ranger? <laughs> Yo, that rule. I was like, This is the best. Yeah. Damn. Uh, I gotta find it. I fun. tagged my wife in it. If, if anybody has that meme, can you send no, it? No, I'm the Green Ranger. <laughs> Dude, that's so. Uh, rude. No, I'm the Green Ranger. That's so funny because if my yeah, if my kid tried to be Michelangelo when we play Ninja Turtles, it would be yeah. like an issue. You'd be like, I've been a fan longer. Longer you than you. Know yeah. Him like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude. yeah. You drop his ass. He is the best Ninja it. Turtle. Um, okay, so a lot of meal prep is good. I would say go grocery shopping, get three pounds of something because two pounds is not really two pounds is not going to take yeah. you through the week. And then stick it in your shirt. Of, <laughs> yeah, I yeah go, or a oh, stroller. Oh my big fat tits! Oh my big fat tits are so bad. I need to leave the store immediately. <laughs> and you run out with chickens uh, in your tits. I've been doing a new right? stealing technique where I just put stuff in the bottom of my stroller. <laughs> I'll put like one or two things in there and like nobody checks if you're buying stuff and you're technically not concealing. It's almost better than the tote bag method because you're not concealing it. Is that like a fact? Lawful fact? I think if you have a stroller, you just go like. You're allowed to use it as a. If you get stopped, which you won't, you go, oh my, oh God, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. They start touching your stroller, you're just like, you fucking pervert. Like that's all you got to say. Get your fucking. Touch my kid. Minimum wage hands off my stroller. Yeah. Get off my stroller. Fucking wage slave. Dunkaroos. Yeah. Yeah, I got Alex Bald. I got Alec Baldwin off of a murder. <laughs> you don't want to know what I can do to you. Um, anyways, my friend was telling me that uh, uh, the the self checkout cameras are advancing now. Okay, like if uh, uh, she was saying, if you like move an item and it looks suspicious, like you're putting two items together, it'll like do a top down view so you can like see yourself. Uh-huh. And it's like, look at this person. You know, it's oh, yeah. like kind of creepy. I don't know if you've. If yeah. you're still doing wow. self checkout theft, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't really no. I don't do that. That's, That's why they don't teach stuff. magic in schools, because they don't want you to know how to steal and stuff. Yeah, well, you definitely get the deniability if you have a stroller, because it's like, oh, my hands are full. I just put stuff down there, but you don't want to put too much down there. I put like one big, like I got, I got kibble for my dog, right? And I just put that it's in too the bottom expensive, of the stroller. Right? It's crazy, crazy. It's actually crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Also, just feed your dog. We've talked about that. They mm. should be eating food. I've read this thing about how, like, dogs from the Jesus 70s Christ. and stuff. And, God. like, before the 70s, dogs lived longer than now. That makes sense. And it's because they, they would also eat table scraps. And nowadays, everyone's like, the regular food, my dog will act like a living thing from this earth. Wait, I don't think that's true. How's that not true? It's because you can't. Well, what I've heard is that your dog shouldn't eat just kibble. All right, I'm not sure. We that's need... a f- known fact. Everybody knows that. It's just sure. you're you're not being a, an educated, caring dog owner. Mm-hmm. That's all that is. What I've heard is that if you if you make your own dog food, yeah, you have to make sure the right amount of nutrients are in it of every, mm. or your dog will know. explode, like in like in nature. No, I just think you can't. You're. It's not healthy to. F- I don't think it's healthy to feed your dog. If and you're once eating again, like lasagna and Burger King, I don't mean share it. But if you're having proper meals, your dog is allowed to eat carrots and and celery. But no person in in 2024 eats that well for you I to do, give it to a dog. Me and my dog do. Yeah. Well, I, I think if you make your own dog food, you have to, it has to be very specifically We've like made allotted. A commitment. We're going for it. I think it has to be very specifically like the nutrients have to be proportional or something. No. 
It you just can't just make your own dog food for Wendy's. You can't just make your own. And if and it's a by the way, on Wendy's, a dog can have some of it. They say yeah. that. It's, it's, and and, if and by the way, has a deal. Unless it's a chocolate yeah. frosty, the dog can have it. I'm not a smart guy either, and I very well could be just repeating dog food industry propaganda yeah, at dog you. Dog food bullshit. <laughs> it's all made up things. They want your yeah. dog to eat cardboard. Yeah. Well, actually, that's I heard that's enough. bad for them. Yeah. yeah. Get I out read, here. I read that uh, dogs in the 70s lived longer because, like, the pieces of horse that they fed them had fewer <laughs> hormones in it. Mm-hmm. It's probably true. Yeah, well, they're actually living not as long because they keep getting molested by their owners. They keep getting brought in the whole food. <laughs> yeah. Whole food getting molested. <laughs> getting Dude, there's, ass cancer. There's no, there's no more classic bit than implying that a dog owner has sex with his dog. <laughs> 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 it's like... <laughs> Just a couple more tips. Yeah, I want to say that just like um, don't a, a good grocery shopping tip is don't fuck with like the don't think about lunch. Just have leftovers for lunch. Make make three pounds of chili. Lentil soup is really good. I had actually I had lentil soup for lunch today. And it didn't really fill me up. But lentil soup with some bread and butter is good. Make a big pot of lentil soup, like two pounds of lentils. Um, or like pretend you're a starving person sometimes, you know, like have yeah. an imagination. Yeah. Living jambalaya is like have an imagination. Jambalaya is great. You can make Ooh, a lot yeah, of jambalaya. Jambalaya is great. My yeah. wife doesn't like it, but I think I'm going to make some next week despite her. I like crock pots. Do you like crock pots? I think crock, I don't crock pots help I'll in terms why. of living frugally. I'll tell you why I don't like them because okay. you can, anything you do in a crock pot, you can do in the oven and mm-hmm. you can like. Uh, sear it before you cook it in the oven. Okay. So if you're making like a pot roast in a in a Dutch oven, mm. you can brown, you can sear it before and brown it. And get you get more flavor instead of just sticking sure. it in a crock pot all day. Crock sure. pots are kind of, I don't know. I think they're a little um, woke. They're a little woke. Primitive. Yeah. A little primitive. They're a little like they're a little like uh, white trash. Oven. They're a little white trash. Damn. Because you need to sear your meat. Sure, I get it, but you know. You want to I don't know. It. You are right. I'm never really trying to go for it when I put anything in a crock pot. I'm just trying to have a lot effort. of something for effort, a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 you could do a chili in a crock pot, but you don't get to like brown the, you know, the crock meat. pot is also when I do something in a crock pot. What do you do in the crock three pot? Three of my meals. I do like a roast in the crock pot. Yeah. I just did like chicken noodle soup in the crock pot. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm just having chicken noodle soup for the next two days. That's how yeah. I do crock pot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of nice though, not having to think about you know, oh, it's the best. lunch. Yeah. It's like Mark Zuckerberg with the gray t shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, you saw that deep fake where people thought he was hot. It's like where he eats the same race like of baby fake. every week. <laughs> he doesn't have to think about it. <laughs> he gets him in a variety in a like a, a variety pack. Yeah. yeah. Um, any more tips? Any more money saving tips? Um No, I really don't do get I roommates. Can't save money. Roommates yeah. live with your parents. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can live like with your parents. Big expense. Yeah. yeah, and don't feel guilty about don't feel guilty about taking anything from your boomer parents. Yeah. Take as much as you possibly Gun can. Point. I took eight thousand dollars <laughs> from my dad to make my special. I paid him oh, back oh, a yeah, little bit. Sure, don't think and I'm gonna. You know what? <laughs> back a little bit. <laughs> don't feel guilty about being a thirty-five year old man bringing a girl back to your parents' house to have sex. Yeah, nothing wrong with that yeah. at all. If you can hear them having sex, give them a, give them a little taste of their own medicine. <laughs> you know. All right, this is from Sam. I am a twenty four year old from Long Island and still live at home. Now I trust that Johnny. This is a long one, so I'm tr- I'm hoping that I, I'm trusting you that you edited this down if it needed to be edited. I did. It was yeah. It was long. It was longer than this. Really? Wow, my brother. Uh, from Long Island still live at home I attended college on and off for like four years after high school I decided to not return about a year and a half ago Because I could never zero in on a major And I was putting myself into debt Great um, For the past, good decision For the past year and a half I've been an Amazon delivery driver Which has been fine Considering I have no real expenses at the moment I'll soon have to find a real long-term career. I've applied to a few jobs that I think I would enjoy while making a decent living. LIRR, New York State Parks, but I've not heard back from either. On top of this, my girlfriend of three years is not happy with her home life and has been putting the pressure on me to find a career so we can move out of our parents' homes and start our life together. My father is a court officer, which is, I like this guy, he's like working class. Uh, my father is a court officer, which has always provided a very comfortable life for my family. Given his status in the court system, I could start the academy and pursue that. He's like Judge Judy's, uh, bailiff, (laughs) um, and pursue that. But I'm struggling with that idea as I'm a pretty big leftist. 
I'd like the peace of mind knowing I have a career and can start my real adult life, but I feel I would be selling out to the system. I know what my father does at work on most days, and it seems like mostly mundane, no real cop-like stuff. I would never become a police officer, but the, at the end of the day, how different would this be? I will keep applying for other jobs, but I'm getting older. You're not really getting older. you got a lot of time. Uh, and this is getting more frustrating. Wait, Sometimes, how's he not getting older? I mean, he's technically He's 24. Yeah. Oh, okay. I understand. That's his life has no. Yeah, but don't you? I don't know if you've noticed. You so my friends, like I see my friends, I'll talk to some of them, especially the ones who became cops. Yeah. Uh, like I'll, I'll run into them all the time now, and it's like, oh, you got, oh, you're gonna retire in ten years. It's like, yeah. I mean, these guys are almost done having to have a job for the rest yeah. of their lives. Right. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. It's crazy. Yeah, but then what do they do? They drive around like the neighborhood doing sure. neighborhood watch. Oh well, no, but some of them, you know, they get boats. They walk around the mall, just like ride around on a boat. Yeah. And Dude, you know, ask, you know, because of the most recent contract, NYPD, you're making six figures after five years on the job to just yeah. play Candy Crush in the <laughs> yeah. subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would never. I mean, I, I had an opportunity to be a cop just because my dad was a cop. Uh, and no, I, I would never do it because, it, yeah, it's yeah. fucking lame. Scott like, can't bring any prostitutes the, in. He the, just the dates them. Laws of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is, I don't know if we were going to read this one, but there's another similar question from a listener mm -hmm. that was about, he's in Australia. He, yeah. He's uh, slated to join the Australian Federal Police. Uh-huh. Uh, with a passing interest in deep politics, I know this institution is engaged in activities that are fundamentally evil, working closely with other intelligence groups like the CIA and Pine Gap, for instance. My main question is, can I work for such an institution and still consider myself a good moral person? Kind regards. It's an Australian asking. It's that. Australian, yeah. And it's like, I actually had a, a listener who's uh, worked for Department of Homeland Security, like hit me up and, you know, told me. Uh, various things about the agency. So I guess you can <laughs> work with it and leak to this podcast yeah. about the inside scoop. Yeah. But, like, my serious advice would be, like, we all got to work. I would just say, like, square your own moral compass of what point will I walk away? Because mm -hmm. it's like, there, uh, you know, <sighs> I do think... When we think about, let's say, a utopian future or revolutionary government or whatever, it's like, yeah, there'll be a lot of former military, former, probably some former police. I mean, you do, like, these institutions, such as the police, do have to exist. I'm not an anarchist, but right now they are set up to protect property of the rich as opposed to protecting people. So I, I think, like, I don't know. There's. Wait, what about Chaz? <laughs> There's like, uh, there is an argument, you know, it's like, obviously you can't change Hitler's SS from within, mm -hmm. and you probably can't change any of these institutions from within. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on some level, there's like, there might be something to be said for learning how they work from the inside, as long as you can um, keep uh, keep your own moral compass and have always a point where you're willing to walk away mm -hmm. I know like, I things this, you're not going to do i know i reference this movie a lot but what about a uh, a cop patch adams you're funny on it but you're mm -hmm. a cop but you bring humor to law and arresting people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that fun bit i think that's fun yeah when you serve a warrant it just like uh it's like a never-ending <laughs> string of paper <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like uh thank you for doing it for a, me. a bunch of cop patch adams are beating the shit out of rodney king and all of their fucking batons are rubber and keep bouncing <laughs> yeah. like a basketball making squeaky noises <laughs> yeah yeah a bunch of cops uh you know it's like 20 cops get out of one little tiny cop car. Yeah, because because to shoot a kid because one guy was selling Lucy's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah, and I I mean I would say he, this guy says I keep applying for other jobs but I'm getting older and this is getting more frustrating. Sometimes I wonder why I'm not taking this opportunity that's right in front of me. Thanks guys, keep up the great work. I think you would you would take it if it was something you really wanted to do. There's probably there's sometimes where you got to listen to you know, your environment, and your instincts. And if you really wanted this opportunity to be a court officer, you'd be doing it. I think it is an interesting question, though, where we all got to work. We all, to some degree, exist in an unfair, unjust system that 
exploits the third world and the global south and such. So we all do make these compromises. Um, but there are, let's say, jobs or fields where I think it is deeply immoral or unethical to work. I would mm. say in the U.S. case, like podcasting, <laughs> Devin, <laughs> working for like you know stand-up comedy, Chick Fil A, <laughs> doing the same forty minutes <laughs> night after night, um, an Not arms updating your material in three years, an arms manufacturer in the U.S., for example, like yeah. Northop Grumman or uh, I guess Raytheon's UK, but whatever, you know, one of these arms manufacturers, the weapons arms of Boeing. Like mm -hmm. I know a guy from my high school who's a uh, uh, he got married and like him and his wife got like six figure, it might have been more than six figure jobs for Boeing working on the drone program. Yeah. And it's like they got a fucking big ass house. And they a got great, a golden doodle. <laughs> yeah, they got a great life. Um, they got a golden doodle with its own Instagram page. You know, and it's like to me personally, I couldn't do that or live with myself if you do that. But it's like yeah. you make your own moral judgments about what kind of compromises you're willing to make. Yeah. Um, and I think like, you know, you could do that, but you'd have to give ten dollars a month to the Out for Smokes podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now that's now we're thinking. If you're on the fifty dollar a month tier, it will actually absolve you yeah, of whatever we'll, you we'll do. We'll sell you an indulgence. <laughs> to, we to should work, start work. selling indulgences <laughs> to work in immoral fields. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say I don't know. I heard sanitation department's a good a good job. Can you be a firefighter? That's kind of like the best. Uh, that's like the best city job, right? Yeah. I don't know. Like a hero, and you don't have to do anything, and there's really no risks unless Work. the CIA decides to do 9-11 again. Right. Yeah. But then it's like, just don't go into any, don't run into the... Yeah, you know the power. You, like know you know buildings could fall. You know buildings can fall, yeah. At free fall Hell speed. Yeah. You know buildings can fall at free fall speed when they're, when they're designed for a plane to hit them. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, and then a bunch of firefighters will be on camera right after saying they heard a bunch of explosions and yeah. we'll all pretend that didn't happen or they just got confused and yeah. didn't know what they were talking about. There were guys that became firefighters and they and they worked for the moving company and they like passed the physical test pretty easily because they're used to moving. Yeah. So you can always like work, maybe work for a moving company for a couple of years. I mean, you're young and it's like pretty good work and then maybe try to be a firefighter and you'll pass the uh physical test yeah in long island there you go then yeah. you're just like friends with everybody right yeah yeah go for it i do miss like working for for got junk and just having that group of guys that you see every day that you you know pick up trash with yeah they get they like the trash yards my buddy does a, a job similar to that where he, like, and I think you were doing this for a while. He clears out apartments, among other things. He clears out apartments for dead people. Yeah. Like, people die and they got all sorts of crap in there. Yeah. And he does find, like, cool things. Like, he found, like, this uh, uh, Civil War era, like, uh, sword, yeah. which he was able to resell. He found, so he's, he's getting them authenticated, but he found, like, some apparently authentic Roman era coins. Uh huh. So he just, like, finds cool shit that he can resell or whatever. It seems like an interesting experience to just see, hey, there's a dead person. This is what their life was. Yeah. This is the remnants of their junk that yeah. the family didn't take first. It's like a History Channel show, right? Where you like open like people's things. You hoarders? Just, yeah. No, not hoarders. But what's it like when someone oh. has... You buy um a, like a sh like a piece of come on I'm losing the word right now pawn pawn stars it's not pawn it's like uh, storage wars storage wars mm -hmm. isn't that kind of like hey someone died and we bought it for two hundred dollars yeah right yeah uh -huh. okay right. that'd be cool I I hope I hope when I have a when I get a civil war sword some garbage man resells it on eBay <laughs> um all right what do we got next from Cade Bot. Is it really worth it to care about looking in shape at all after a certain point? I'm 41, married, have an awesome kid, but I'm still a fat, tubby shit. I lost weight at 37. I'm 6'2 and went from 423 to 270 at my lightest. I still felt fat. I'm back up to 350 thanks to depression, a sedentary job, and having no control of my eating. I never quit lifting or doing cardio, so I'm fat but strong and can run a decent amount. Do I give up on the idea of being 250 and just remain the heap I am? Or do I starve myself and not enjoy anything food-wise the rest of my life? This is like a perfect question for me. Mm. I have no idea. The, some There's some days where the only good part of my day is getting to pick what I eat for lunch. Hmm. You know? Yeah, it is interesting. 
And then it's like, yeah, you're married. <laughs> but you don't want to look at. I don't. I. I don't like when I look when I when I see myself on a podcast or something. Brothers being on, too dismissive of like it doesn't matter to be in shape. And then he's like, you know, I'm three fifty. Like that's a big ass size, my right. brother. Like for your health, you got to lose weight. Also, if you were once four hundred and twenty three pounds, you're a, you're fucking jacked. Like you're strong as fuck, my dude. Yeah. So lose. The, I hate a motherfucker who goes from fat. To the most muscular, handsome guy you ever met, right? Because how about Dan Lamore? They had to carry their fucking body, right? Their fat, their fat ass around forever. Yeah, that they now have the luxury of being gorgeous. Yeah. So go be gorgeous. My Remember that friend. Ren and You're Stimpy episode? Too. Remember that Ren and Stimpy episode where they they suck all the fat out of Stimpy and he's like jacked, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like toned and jacked. No, that sounds yeah. cool though. But yeah. you're six foot two. You're thirty seven, and in truth, he's that's 41. like when guys get hot. Oh, yeah, he lost weight at thirty seven. Yeah, he's forty one, so he's hot. He's at a guy hot age. He's at guy hot age. Yeah, forty one to fifty one. Yeah, right. If yeah. you give a shit, so yeah, man, give a shit. Dude. But he's married. Because there's a hot guy under that. Yeah, I understand you're married. Yeah, I never understood that when someone goes like, I like food, but they weigh that much. I go like, oh, totally different um, genetics. See, I would I say love food don't. Too, and, and I go, how could I even eat more gross than I do already? Yeah. I only eat like shit. So I, I, I don't know. I haven't been to the gym in a while, and I wish I had been going because I just feel like I think I look okay now, but sometimes I'll like see myself on camera and I'll go, oh, this is like really bad. So you don't want that to catch up to you. But I would say like keep enjoying your life, but go to the gym at least 30 minutes a day. It makes go to the gym. I don't years. ever. Yeah. Um. And I'm like constantly depressed all the time. Mm. And anytime I run, like I do kind of wish finally, I was lifting. Yeah. When I finally get the the courage to run or be active once yeah. every three months, it yeah. is the best day out of those three months. Yeah. And I wish I could catch that. And I'm sure you have a I know a hard time catching that too. But catch it. it seems I wish worth I was it, lifting. Right? I I, I yeah. would say try to tr yeah work out for the health aspect of it, but don't worry about the. Uh, cosmetic stuff and like, you could leave your wife if you lose weight you don't want to you can't leave your wife oh okay Mike could you up. imagine me if I left my wife <laughs> just because you lost weight <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you thought y'all got hot <laughs> I'm like I'm like damn I got <laughs> I just <laughs> <laughs> my checking account has like a 500 extra dollars in it and yeah. I leave my wife <laughs> yeah there's no like uh there's no leaving my there's no leaving my wife and that's a good decision. Yeah. You know. It's great. Mike goes on staff's podcast and it's like looks like we'll have to have an extra wide lens for this one. Yeah. <laughs> Whose podcast? Stavs. Oh. Stavs. Oh. Does, uh, wouldn't he already have an extra wide lens? Cuz it zoom out cuz you're oh. bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know I thought of it I was like is it even worth saying? No, dude, you got Probably it. not. You sniped him. All right, right. I'm just being, I'm just being <laughs> you, you just decapitated. I, uh, I feel fine calling Mike fat, but I don't want to call Stav fat. Yeah. From Anonymous, I've reacquainted myself with an ex-girlfriend from 10 years ago. The relationship in the past was passionate and almost crazy, but it was extremely nourishing and inspirational in regards to my creativity and what I was able Oh, this is some 500 Days of Summer shit. Mm -hmm, yeah. I was able to write... I'm a poet. Should I continue to regrow our friendship, which may possibly lead to something more? Ooh, that's tough, man. Because the, the, the you I know, mean, you definitely will. It's you're not the like... best people in your life for those kind of girls, though. Yeah, you know, or those kind yeah. of people that you meet. Yeah, um, yeah. I think first thing you should do is like change your phone background so it's not her anymore. <laughs> but he's a poet, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, there's only so many words that rhyme with pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to get mushy. <laughs> but darling, <laughs> you are pussy. <laughs> uh. It would be funny if like she was his, she was his muse and the poems he was writing is like <laughs> the United Snakes of America. <laughs> ka, ka. I'll go to the Tak ka, 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 Bell. <laughs> Dude, be mature. It's from ten years ago. It's Friday be night, and you bet. And try to actually have a relationship with this interesting person, mm -hmm. and see what happens. Mm -hmm. 
If you're so interesting, you should be. If you're both interesting enough, you should be able to have a friendship and not a relationship. Be adults. Yeah, yeah. But you can't ever tell anybody to like cut somebody off or not talk to somebody. I mean, you're gonna. Yeah, I didn't say that. Wait, Mike, gonna... you were starting a poem. Yeah, but it's. I don't know if it's anything. It's Friday night, and you bet. <laughs> Your pussy is tight. Ex, extra tight and extra wet. <laughs> your pussy is tight and extra wet. Ladies and wet. gentlemen, the poet laureate of the United States. <laughs> and now, please welcome Steve. <laughs> when they do Joe Biden's second term, <laughs> they're like, we're going to move in a different direction. Instead of having that Amanda Gorman hack, <laughs> we're going to have this guy. <laughs> Dude, that'd be so cool. <laughs> the poet laureate before the inauguration of Joe Biden is just like, <laughs> it's Friday night. Your I pussy's know I, extra tight. I know I need to play my cards, <laughs> right? but but my dick is extra, extra hard. <laughs> wow, that was a really good poem. He just goes on for 45 minutes. <laughs> Kamala's like, I love, you know, I love poetry. <laughs> She's pretending to like it. <laughs> um, that's cool. You don't meet that many uh, poets nowadays. I would like to see some of your uh, send if you can email us some of your work. Yeah, pl- please. Yeah, send us your poems, brother. I do like poetry. Yeah, Bukowski's poems are pretty good. Yeah, Charles Bukowski. He's like, I puked on my dick again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Yo, that's, okay. a, that's such a Bukowski thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my cock, my cock. <laughs> it's small in my hand. And I woke up smelling like shit. Oh, he's such and a then baby, I had to, dude. Is he? Oh, yeah. You never seen he, like a Bukowski in it? I haven't. Well, you know what? I haven't read his stuff since I was like 18. But when I was 18, oh, yeah. he was my favorite author. Oh, Ginsburg, the guy who fucked, I woke all, up in a fucked pile. all the beatniks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that guy rules. Yeah. Alan Ginsburg. Yeah, yeah. Howl? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was he actually... really he really turned a lot of guys out. <laughs> he turned <laughs> all the beatniks <laughs> out. <laughs> he really Yo, beat Shout me. out to Alan. <laughs> like beat shout dick. out to Alan Ginsburg. Because <laughs> Kerouac was like not like o- an openly gay guy. No, no. He was like very closeted. Yeah, that's why probably. he was on the road. Yeah. Uh, on the chode. <laughs> on the chode. On the load. <laughs> <laughs> that was the original thing you wanted to call it on the load. <laughs> You've heard of that? Remember they like released the gayer version? Of, like uh, how many years of ago? On the road? Released? Yeah, they're like without when like the stuff they made him take out. Mm. And he's just like Cox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm daddy o. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sick. That's another uh, thing I love I when I was sixteen I I loved. I love that book. Yeah, it, it starts in Patterson. It kind of does. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that is something I did in San Francisco. I went to City Lights Books, uh-huh. uh, which is where, like, uh, Allen Ginsberg and, like, Bob Dylan would hang out there. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool. Like, uh, on the wall, they have uh, uh, several pictures of Bob Dylan with Allen Ginsberg, like, smoking cigarettes in the back mm-hmm. alley. But Allen so- balls on my chin. <laughs> 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 Dude, that, you know Bob Dylan wrote that. Oh, <laughs> uh, that Taylor Swift album came out this weekend. It's called yeah. like Poet. What is Tortured it called? Poets. Tortured Society. Poets. By the way, talking about poets. Yeah. And I was just thinking, if Taylor Swift said the N word like Bob Dylan does in Hurricane, yeah. Uh-huh. And her fans are like, it's actually she's allowed to say it because yeah. what she's doing. Yeah, that's what Sh- yeah. Timothy Chalamet is playing Bob Dylan in the movie. So he's been saying the N word for ultimate <laughs> authenticity. <laughs> Taylor Swift's like a wise man once said, "There's blacks and there's." <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't, Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Pryor had an album. It's called that. Oh, uh, just a nice little poem was W. H. Auden day day. Uh, uh, a poem uh, in memory of uh, W.B. Yeats mm-hmm. when Yeats died. And there's this line that I always like that is a time that is intolerant of the brave and the innocent uh, and indifferent in a week to a beautiful physique worships language and forgives everyone by who it lives, pardons cowardice and conceit, lays its honors at their feet. Time Who's that was this? Uh, this is W.H. Auden. Okay. Uh, time that with this strange excuse, pardon Kipling and his views and will pardon <laughs> Paul Codwell. Pardon him, for, uh, and will pa- pardon Paul Cal- uh, Claudwell, Claudel pardons him for writing well. And it goes on, but it's like, it's just an interesting poem because uh, W.H. Auden, like, uh, despised W.B. Yeats for his personal views, but it, what he's saying in this poem is like, if you just write well, mm-hmm. time will kind of forgive you 
and you know Kipling was uh, uh, like a racist colonist, and that's the the whole thing you wrote about the white man's burden is about. It's the white man actually has to civilize these people. That's what their burden is. Oh, gee. And so, uh, you know, so I, I just always find that an interesting line: "Time which forgets in a week, a good physique, it'll pardon you for for writing well." Boom. And an apple a day keeps the doctor away, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, this All is right. from Craig? This feels like it's maybe more for me. I need help dealing with holidays and different sides of the family when you're married. It's probably my biggest struggle as an adult. Every single holiday is this convoluted, tortured, endless drama between my family and my wife. I love my in-laws, but they're blue-pilled libtards who always act like they don't care about any of the major holidays and can just see us whenever, except when the day actually comes, then they get all mad and weird. Then my MAGA Patriot family just expects us to show up wherever they say, no matter how inconvenient it is for us. We have a small kid, and I work 50 to 60 hours every week, and I'm on the road half the time. I thought us having a kid will make it so everybody would just come to us, but no. God, that's annoying. <laughs> The worst part of it all is once the day comes and goes, we always end up having a nice visit with whoever it is, and life just goes on like normal, but every single time the lead-up is absolute misery. Okay, so, see, the nice thing about something like Christmas, the best holiday, is that you can split it up by being like Christmas Eve with you guys, Christmas Day yeah, you can with try. the other family. That's what For we sure. kind of do. Um, Thanksgiving's tough. I know, like, my family yeah. has trouble with this. Um, you know, my mom is a big, uh, sh she acts like she's going to have a heart attack if you don't show up for a holiday. You yeah. Know? She acts like you did something terrible. Yeah. Um, really? Yeah, she's a big fucking baby. And so, um, both, I mean, both families should understand that there's other people. Of course, like, yeah. like, I mean, you should technically be allowed to, as an adult, go, hey, I'm not doing. Uh, yeah. We're not doing this holiday. We don't feel yeah. like it. Yeah. And your family would be like, what the fuck? Oh, he doesn't want to be with the family this holiday? Yeah. Well, then we don't need him any other holiday. And you go, yeah, are you yeah. psychos? Yeah. I'm making an adult decision. But anyway. It's crazy because my grandmother's 98. She's like mean. She's racist. But I told her on Easter, I was like, yeah, we're going to probably visit Deb's family on Easter because we haven't seen them in a while. And she's like, that's fine. That's really important. You got to split the time. You got to share. You, you know, her? so I don't know why. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, it is important. My grandfather's, like, dying. I should be spending more time with sure, him. Sure, but, but you, know, you can't. You, yeah, you're married. You're a union. Yeah. And so, like, almost, it, if they're being so fucking lame about it, just set it up in the beginning of the year, which I know is, like, impossible. Because you be can like, have you can designated... You Easter, you th Thanksgiving. Right, If right. you change it up, that's not really our fault. You right. Know, let's try to set these plans. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Do Halloween with the MAGA family. Right? And then do... Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. I like that. What are the big holidays? Halloween. Yeah. Well, it's Halloween tough, with man. The I think MAGA families do holidays right, you know? Like, what are you going to celebrate with the Libtard family? Yeah, for Halloween right. <laughs> for Halloween with the MAGA family, we're dressing our child as the baby that Hillary Clinton ate on camera. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, but it is a liberal holiday. There's no liberal holidays. Liberals don't like holidays. Yeah. Maybe, like, um... My wife is Huma Abedin holding a knife and fork. <laughs> And we're gonna pretend to cut up the baby. Liberals do low key love. Christmas yeah, you could so you much. could scare the you could scare the blue pill family by dressing up as a hard day's work. <laughs> <laughs> dressing up as somebody with a real job. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> um, yeah. So do Halloween with the. Magus also, I family. thought kind of the rule in my family was like if you're the girl, mm -hmm. then. You, the girl always goes to her mother's house. Yeah, you know, and her father's house. Yeah, and the her husband has to go with her. And you're a man, and so holidays aren't your thing. Yeah, for your family anymore. And since it's me, if right. I ever right, get right, married, right, right, right. I I would. Sorry, mom, I have to go to this family's holidays. Yeah, that's what it was. But now my mom kind of ruined all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We like yeah. have to see her. I don't but know. if the if the if the liberal family doesn't care, what if you did like the day before the holiday with, like if it's Easter, go see them on Sat. Can you go see them on Saturday and then see the MAGA family since they probably care more about it? Right. He's saying everything's hard things. for him though. You know, like the yeah. small kid work. I get it, man. Can you start hosting at your house? Does that he work? tried to? I, it would make yeah. it so everyone would just come to us. And it should, especially uh -huh. if you have a kid. Yo, especially if you're the only one with the kid. Yeah. On Christmas, people should come to you because eventually your kid is just going to want to stay with his toys. Yeah, so I like, know. Make a kid leave his toys. That's that shit's sucks. so lame. Just yeah. go there. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. 
See, I would I would love to host di- like holiday dinners at my place, but my grandparents are too Fragile. they're 97 and 98 so they can't travel, but after they after they're gone, I'm looking forward to hosting like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas. <laughs> they can't Christmas. get to your house because there's a protest on the bridge. <laughs> and you, your grandmother dies. <laughs> and I'm leading the protest. <laughs> it's a special out for smokes yeah. with Norman Finkelstein <laughs> protest. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Actually, you're not going to Thanksgiving this year, you, <laughs> yeah. s- you pig. <laughs> you're a moral pig. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you wops aren't going to be having any lasagna tonight. <laughs> That's a um, yeah, so good luck with that. I don't know. Try, uh, have, if you can, try to do designated holidays. Because that's what we kind of do. Like Christmas Eve is like at my my fam- I, all I want is Christmas Eve at my family. Christmas Day, whatever, do. But then it's like, if they're not, there's only a- if they're not super old, can you just like months in advance or whatever say we're hosting it here? Yeah, want to come? Yeah, you know, I mean that might work. Yeah. I don't know the situation. Or think about whatever because because the, there has there have to be people who like holidays mean more to them. Hmm. Right, like different different people. Like I'm sure maybe like his dad really likes. Right. I don't know, cause like St. Patrick's Day, cause you could split up like, you could split up Christmas Day, Christmas Eve. You could split up Halloween, Thanksgiving, maybe if you had to. You could split up like St. Patrick's Day, Easter, and then you could split up like Memorial Day, Fourth of July. So there's like three, right? <clears throat> so there's like three double holidays that you could split up. And then you could split up like Yom Kippur or Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. Yeah. Or just tell your, also, you shouldn't be celebrating. Or tell your Valentine's MAGA family days. that you're yeah. Zionist Jew. You're a Zionist Jew now. You they'll don't celebrate like Christmas. Yeah. And they'll start sucking your dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Problem solved. So go. yeah, try to try to split them up and and try to find other holidays. You got your flag days. You got your MLK day. You got your Arbor President's day. day. Actually, no. There we go. Martin Luther King President's Day. Yeah. There we go. You know, yeah, so the like mega family dinner. definitely doesn't celebrate Martin Luther <laughs> King. So you can spend that with the blue and pills. And the blue pill celebrates it a little too much. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you, you you can celebrate like George Washington Carver Day with the MAGA family. They probably right. like they probably like peanut butter. Yeah. The uh um, Yeah, MAGA gets all the patriotic MAGA gets Veterans Day. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. MAGA gets Veterans Day, yeah. But you don't hang out with your and then you what's another Veterans Day dinner, let's go. But then what's another? And then can you do Black Friday? See, Deb's mom only wants to do Black Friday. That's what a what does that even mean? Piece of trash. My mother in law is. She wants to eat with you guys. Black, Black Friday, Friday fucking sucks now. They they go they their tradition is like they go shopping on Black Friday. Uh, so we do Thanksgiving cute. with my family, and then Black Deb does Black Friday with her mom. But even like two or three years ago, there used to be good deals. Yeah. But like last Black Friday sucked. The Black Friday before that sucked. I mean, yeah. it's just not. Good deals there anymore. Yeah, it's more like a Jewish Friday. <laughs> Israeli Friday. It's more like an Israeli Friday. <laughs> ID Friday. Here's All a right. good one. Why don't you guys take this away? <clears throat> uh, you don't well, mean yeah, to? Yeah, sure, sure. I'll get it. Uh, how do you maintain friendships as you get older? I feel like I had a ton of friends in my late teens, early 20s, but now it's basically zero. I've drifted away from all my old friends and even my cousins. I threw myself into my career, and while I have a nice salary to show for it, I feel like I've alienated my old friends and especially the people who were once my very close work friends. I work at a small construction company, and I'm middle management. I'm number three behind the two owners, which puts me in the spot of not wanting to look like a suck ass and hang out with them all the time, but also having to avoid fraternizing with the guys below me. I feel like I used to walk that line really well and had some great friends here, but slowly people have quit. One guy had a drug problem and killed himself, and I've had major blowouts with two of my best friends here uh, because they were such pieces of shit to work with. One this dude's quit- a Bruce Springsteen song. <laughs> <laughs> one one quit and one still works here, but we barely speak and are often on... But we on- barely <laughs> speak in our own different crew. Well, I work at Barone <laughs> Brothers Construction. <laughs> I got a good job. Responsibility, <laughs> raising a kid and giving up alcohol. I said take ten, and they took fifteen. <laughs> and I said lose my number. You don't have a job here anymore. 
All right. Yeah. I said, you guys are stealing <laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> I said, hey, we all shit. Everybody shits. What am I going to have a wet ass? <laughs> Yo, whoa, whoa. The pizza party was supposed to be one slice per person, and some of you guys took two. <laughs> I try to do something nice, and you guys walk all over me. Yeah. <laughs> and now no one will come to my son's christening. <laughs> all right. There we go. Yeah, we're back. Uh, we're back. Get the uh, word out. We back. Get the word out. We up. <laughs> stringer bell. Somebody yeah. <laughs> stringer bell me. <laughs> We got clips again. <laughs> um, yeah, so they work on, on different crews. Anyway, taking more responsibility, raising a kid and giving up alcohol kind of led me to a point where I've just been, have to stay different from, ev- distant from everyone. I feel like I would have been happier if I just stayed a grunt. I had a pencil on my desk and somebody <laughs> took it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a grunt. <laughs> All right. Uh, That's the tough thing, though, because it's like you get that management position and you're like, God, it's, it's not going to change. I'm still going to be. Yeah, it's just no, so you hard to can't maintain have work conversation and friends. Yeah, uh, yeah. When also, you're nobody wants job, to go to their boss. Like, I don't house. want to continue this job when I'm off my job. Yeah, so work friends kind of. Yeah, it's not fun. It's fun at work. It's yeah. not fun I when can, you're off work. I can kind of relate to that though, where it's like I had middle age and I just have like fewer friends than I used to, but not because I became management, but because I posted about how a bunch of Israeli Mossad agents <laughs> were involved in 9 <laughs> yeah, 11. Yeah. And some of my more liberal Seattle friends distanced themselves yeah. from me. I said, hey guys, it's really not cool to talk about women that way. <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't objectify them. We got a lot of women who work at this company, and what would they say if they heard you talking like that? <clears throat> um, okay, so but can you reach out to like people who are not in your uh, in your field? Can you have little Sunday dinners? Can you have barbecues? Can you? Yeah. You know, I was tell I was telling somebody about this. An- another comic. I-, I drove a comic home from a gig Saturday night, and I was talking about how like um, I ran into Tim Dillon at Skankfest. Like uh, back in 2022, and I hadn't talked to Tim in forever, and I just happened to see him on the street, and I like was even nervous to go and approach him because it had been so he got long. So much fatter, <laughs> and he got so, yeah. <laughs> I was like, he he's gonna honey, pick I me up and hurl kid. me into a <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I was nervous. He I was, was uh, like, standing next to a 17-year-old boy with a buzz cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was clearly trying to pay for sex. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Should I even tell this fucking story? No, tell the story. You know, but it's like you were nervous, but then you talked to him, and I I tapped him on the show. I said, I said, hey, how's it going? He's like, oh man, you got to come to L.A. because it's like I don't have any friends out there, and you got to come out and we'll podcast and we'll have dinner and we'll do some shows. And I was like, and we it, that one interaction made us like kind of rekindle our uh, yeah our little relationship, you know. So, um, and if I hadn't. Ran into him on the street. I wouldn't have like done his podcast last year, and then and then recently. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out to people. I always feel like you know we have we have friends that are um, that are good people and they're like successful, and you feel like you're bothering them, but it doesn't hurt to just be like I don't know what it, like it like be like give like Dan Soder money. wants give you a to, job, <laughs> which the they could, which they totally could, yeah. <laughs> but Dan Soder wants wants to hear from you about wrestling sure, or sports sure, or whatever sure. it is and yeah, like yeah. even if he doesn't you know, send him a meme or something you know it's like try to you see did you maybe not dedicate- get that meme did you maybe you didn't understand the meme but it's so Randy Savage. What do you think you're better than me, Dan <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You go, oh, what do you have a spot at the cellar right now? What, what are you big time? You think you're too big of a celebrity to laugh react my hey, meme? Hey, Dan, you're gonna meet the exact same people on the way down. And when your girlfriend cheats on you, <laughs> you'll be calling me. He doesn't laugh react your meme, so you fucking mark David Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But old friends hey, are. Hey Dan, when like your head forever. gets stuck in an ice freezer. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be calling me, you piece of shit. Um, but don't feel don't. It, this might feel a little cringe and gay, but don't feel bad about like just just texting your friends. Sure. Like, hey, what's up? Haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, I might do that right now to my friend Joe. I haven't talked to in a little bit. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Actually, <clears throat> um, I was also gonna say I might have mentioned this before, but like uh, uh, I play Magic the Gathering, like 
it's a great way and any hobby is a great way to meet people and make friends like when i was doing like a study abroad in amp my old friend the last thing i text him you don't still live in tampa do you <laughs> nothing back <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was studying abroad in Amsterdam, you can just like find out like the stores where they'll have Magic the Gathering events and tournaments, and I would just show up and like I meet people. I made like some friends there. It's like hobbies or chess or whatever you do, axe throwing. Yeah, like man. just go to those kind of events. You'll meet people if you're trying to meet new people. The internet, Twitter has been great. I made a lot of friends on Twitter. And it it feels lame, but it's just that's what life is. You know, sometimes you gotta like buy a dartboard. And my buddy bought a dartboard and put it in his garage. And he's sometimes, like, hey, this summer, like, come over on Saturdays if you ever want to throw darts. Sometimes and last Saturday, that's what my friends did. I didn't show up, but, you know, they were there. So Sometimes you got to go to Target and buy the biggest Nerf gun that they have. Yeah, you buy water guns. Yeah. You say, buy super soakers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. They're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You got to want to be your friend anyway. Yeah, you say bangerang. Anyway, I got an early flight tomorrow, so what are we doing with um Tom. Anyway, good luck. We got 5 minutes. I, we're like just under oh, Okay. okay. Uh, I'm person. stupid about movies. Who's a director I should watch all his or her haha, ha, very funny works. Um look, let's be honest. There's only good male directors. Yeah, well Penny Marshall's good. No, I'm just I'm just being an asshole. What about Greta Gerwig? Yeah. What about the Barbie movie, you piece of fucking shit? The greatest movie that ever existed. I'm going to self-immolate. Actually, you know, The Ascent is uh, one of the greatest war movies ever made. That was made by a female mm. Soviet Union director. Yeah. Um, it would be so funny if I just got the title who's completely it, who's wrong. It, let me give you my list of... I consider these movies to be sort of mm. like masterpieces. B <coughs> Big Night, Stanley Tucci movie. Yes. About the Italian uh, restaurant. Oh, I thought I thought you were saying Black Night with Martin Lawrence. <laughs> Oh, what's that? Where he goes back in time? He goes back in yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, which okay. is like it's like a, a Connecticut Yankee. Okay, and King Big Knight Knight is what that Black is. Knight, yeah. Big Mama's <laughs> house. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, here let's all let's all say five movies we consider to be like perfect movies or whatever masterpieces. Oh, if but if you were just going by a director, Stanley Kubrick, yeah, but and Terrence Malick. Well, that's the question. Who? What's a I don't director? Give a fuck with this guy's question. What's is? a director? I should. We're the watch ones with the show. All their movies. Yeah, Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick Terrence Malick. But who's what? What director doesn't have Malick a couple means. misses? Terrence Malick did the Thin Red Line. Um, he did uh, uh, what is it called? Fuck, a quiet. No, God damn it. Quiet hey, place. What about I was just uh, drinking and I haven't had a fucking a hidden life. That's what I'm thinking of. Mel Brooks. <laughs> Mel Brooks for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Terrence Malick did Chaplin the New World. The New World shit. is pretty good. Um, he just makes visually beautiful. Like that's why I love Kubrick. He makes visually beautiful movies. And yeah. Sta uh, Terrence Malick. Every movie I've seen of him is visually beautiful. Uh huh. Scorsese, uh, Raging Bull is like one of my favorite. It's an, I'm not saying it's my favorite movie. It's is one it? of my favorite things to watch. I like staring at it. I think it's like beautiful. I think Raging Bull is beautiful. Yeah. See, that's a movie where I've tried to watch it a bunch of times, and I go, "This, I don't know if this is his best. Maybe I just don't." Oh, personally it visually like gets me off. Yeah. Casino is my favorite Scorsese. Is it? Yeah. I love Have we Casino. talked about this? Favorite well, that's like Scorsese. Cool guy, that's like the cool guy thing to say now. No, the Casino is the best Scorsese. Movie. Is it? I did rewatch King of Comedy. It's yeah. so fucking funny. Yeah, like, Johnny rewatched when, it lately. Yeah, when he's like, he's like doing the audition tapes uh, for the late night show. Yeah, and he's just like doing his bits, and his mom keeps yelling at him, <laughs> like "Mom!" Okay, yeah. I gotta watch that again. Yeah, definitely gotta watch it. Um, here's five movies that I would recommend. That sure. I think are ma I think are great. I would go, uh, Big Night, uh, Punch Drunk Love, Fargo, Paper Moon. And there's another one. Fargo's great. Fargo's great, but yeah, Cohen Brothers. That'd be another director that you could, uh, if you just, if you wanted to do director all their movies, Cohen Brothers would be one. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but maybe like, oh, The Squid and the Whale. Mm. I think you mean James no, watch. And actually, Giant no, Pete. no, actually, Noah Baumbach is a is a director. You should watch all his movies. Who's that? He did Marriage Story, Squid and the Whale. Is Marriage Story skip... actually good? Yeah, it's good. Okay. You're just saying that because your personal because friend Scarlett Johansson is in it. My personal friend is in it. Dude, Charlie it. Chaplin's Gold Rush is a fucking banger, and he, he made it. Yeah. It, oh, it's a banger. Skip, yeah. Kicking, and Screaming, that one was kind of a dud, but The Squid and the Whale. What else did Noah Baumbach do? The Squid and the Whale is probably my favorite. Yep, me Bombach. too. Baumbach. 
Did he? No, I don't. No, I don't poop know. shoot. He did. I'm shoot trying to his wife. <laughs> I t- I, it's so poop funny. Shoot. <laughs> it's so funny how the, the fuck squid is. and the whale poop shoot <laughs> marriage story. <laughs> What's poop shoot? <laughs> That's, I don't know. It was oh, a play okay. on his last name. Okay. Yeah. It's funny how the internet just breaks your brain. <laughs> wow, well, is that a play on his last name? my brain went. Fucking idiot. <laughs> Where I, heard, I hear Noah Bombach, and I'm just like, people on the internet hate him for some reason. Is he a Zionist? They hate Did him. he rape somebody? No, you know what? He cheated on his wife oh. with uh, Greta Gerwig. Oh. But they're together now. Wow. Oh. The guy who made the Superman, he's like a pervert, right? Or X-Men movies. He's like, he has sex with boys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Snyder? Is he the Snyder Cut guy or no? Or Schneider? No, it's it's not Snyder. It's um uh, Swanee. Fuck. fuck. Now I'm spacing on that. If um, oh yeah, who's the guys who made Dumb and Dumber and uh... Barely Brothers? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. It was something about Mary. They dude, they're like Weezer. It's mm. like either w- one of the coolest things you've heard or the dumbest fucking thing you've ever heard. Oh, stuck like on when, you. Stuck on you. Shame on them, it's, dude. Sorry, it's Brian Singer is who you were thinking Brian of. Brian Singer, yeah, oh. yeah. Me, myself, and Irene is phenomenal, though. That's them. Okay. So, right. All right, so five movies. Judgment at Nuremberg. Um, Operation Anthropod about the uh, mer- assassination of uh, Reinhard Heydrich, the Nazi. Uh, <laughs> the Last Days of Sophie Scholl about the, uh, uh, the murdered German the VHS dissident. only Scholl knows <laughs> of, of a girl he murdered. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, Hitler, The Rise of Evil with Robert Carlyle. Okay. And, um... Having to play Hitler has to be so fucking embarrassing, no? Doesn't it feel so silly to have to be Hitler in a thing? You're not gonna be Hitler. You can't, you know? You look stupid. It's too much of a costume try. to our brains. Oh. You could try, but it feels like Halloween. The Captain. Because the worst Hitler costume looks like the best Hitler costume. The Captain's a great movie. It's about, uh, uh, based on a true event, uh... A Nazi- Scott, I bet you could be Hitler if you really put your mind to it. <laughs> <laughs> a random like Nazi soldier at the end of World War II, like when the Germans, you know, they're being invaded, they're losing. Mm. He just finds a dead captain like in a car somewhere and steals his uniform and starts like giving people orders and nice. like you know, it's like a the, Seinfeld episode. The, the the very end of the Third Reich, and it's like, it's a uh, it's a very dark but at moments comical movie. Yeah, because it like deals with like. Uh, just power and abuse of power and just like these people like and he gets this group around him and of course they immediately become sadists yeah and it's I there are moments of it that are comical that but it's like awesome it's like I need to put dramatic. a TV in my bedroom because I don't watch any I don't get to watch anything if I could just watch movies in like 15 minute increments Hal Roach the guy who made the R gang comedies all right yeah. I think that's the end of the episode. <laughs> all right all right Thanks guys for, uh, okay Thank you for supporting the Patreon. Thanks for supporting the Patreon. We love we'll you. see you next week. Let us know what you want us to talk about next. I'm thinking maybe we do a little, we could do an episode about all of our heroes. Everybody yeah. pick one of your heroes and we'll talk about that. Oh, if uh, if we didn't get to your advice question and it's like really important, just yeah. email us again. Email us again. <coughs> yeah. Like Bye-bye. don't don't mark David Chapman us. Just send us another email and we'll get to it later. Yes, please don't assassinate us. <laughs> Please don't assassinate three podcast hosts. (laughs) All right, bye-bye.